Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse. I'm going to show today a couple of graphs that you can make with our graphing calculators in Casio. I'm using the 9860, but this works with the Prism or the 9750 graphing calculator, whichever version you have. Nice thing about Casio is we have the same keystrokes for all of our graphing calculators. So if you know one, you know all of them. So we're going to go into statistics. So I'm going to arrow over here and choose my statistics button, hit execute. I've already entered my data. This data comes from an activity in our Fostering Mathematical Thinking book. Um, it's called Brothers and Sisters. Students are to collect, ask students in their classroom how many siblings they have and record the data. So we have some sample data here where the number of siblings is in list one. So I've kind of identified that. And you'll see we have zero siblings all the way to 10 but we are missing a few numbers because there were no students that had, for example, five siblings. So those are not in our list. The second list is our frequency, how many times students had that particular number of siblings. So for example, there are six students in the class that had zero siblings. So that, that shows the frequency. So in our table, we have siblings and frequency. So now we want to graph, and the nice thing about Casio is you can make several different types of graphs and this is a great thing when you're working with students and data collection is what graphs going to represent our data the best. So when I hit graph here, so you'll notice that's my option, I'm going to choose F1 and I have three possible graphs I can turn on. And we're going to actually turn on all three and do three different graphs at the same time. So I'm going to actually set up the graphs ahead of time and so that we can kind of quickly go through each one of them. So you'll see under F6 that we have our set. So we're going to work with each graph first. So for graph one, this is great to work with your students. Do I want, if I've collected a frequency table of number of siblings, is a scatter plot going to be the best choice? Um, in this case, we're going to actually arrow down. And here's where I want to point out is there's so many different types of graphs you can make. Scatter plot is your standard one, XY, pi graph. And if we hit F6, we even have some more choices. So I actually want to make a box graph. So notice I can do histogram, box plot, bar chart, normal distribution, lots of options. So I'm going to choose F2 here. So now my graph one is going to be um, a, a box plot. So now I have to kind of say, where are things coming from? So where is my data coming from? So my list one is going to be my X list. That's what I want. My frequencies are going to be coming from not one, but from list. So over here, see my options down at the bottom, I'm going to choose function two, and I'm going to put in, I want list two, and hit execute. So now my frequency is coming from list two. So list one is my data, and list two is my frequency. And let's turn the outliers on, in case we have some outliers. For example, 10 might be considered an outlier, depending. So we've got graph one set up. Let's hit exit. Exit always takes you back to the previous menu and let's set up. Hit set again, but this time I want to do graph two. So notice graph two is under function two. So let's do a different type of graph this time. Let's actually do a pi graph. So let's arrow down. Pi is here under F4. So I'm going to change it to a pi. Now pi graphs are only going to use one variable. So that's coming from list one, the number of siblings. And actually, we don't want it to come from list one. We want it to come from our frequency. What's the percentage? So we're going to change the data to come from list two. So notice again, I want a list. So I hit function one. This time I want it to be list two. And I'm going to hit execute. So I've changed my data to be looking at list two. I like the percentage display. And I'm not going to store the data. So we're done with this graph setup. So let's hit exit. And let's set up our third and final graph. So this is now graph three. So we've already got a box plot. We've got a pie graph. So let's do a, and I'm going to choose F6 to get some more options here. Let's choose a histogram this time. So notice my choices once I choose histogram, where am I getting my X list from? So list one is correct. What is my frequency coming from? So again, we have to change that to be our list two. Now, if you were using the prism, you would also have additional um, resources here where you could change the colors of the, the bars in the histogram. But we don't have that. We're working with the black and white calculator, so that's not an option. So let's hit exit. We're actually ready to graph. 
So we know that each graph has going to show us something different. So let's choose graph one. So we're going to hit F1 here. And now I have my box plot. And I can <clears throat> hit Shift F1 and actually trace. So I get a little moving point here. And it's giving me the minimum value of 0. And if I hit my right arrow, it goes to quartile 1, which is 1. It goes to my median, which is also 1. So that's why we don't see a line in the middle of our box there. Quartile 3 is 3. And our max is 6. And then what's this over here? That actually, this is our outlier. This is 10. We asked it to include the 10. Um, so 10 is considered an outlier. So that's um, exciting stuff here. All right, so let's hit exit. And let's see what graph 2 looks like. So when I hit graph 2, you'll see that we have not the numbers. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and G is really small, or E is literally small, and G is really small, it's not showing up, and then we have a percentages. So what do these actually mean? Well, this is uh, showing us the percentage, and if we want to go back, we can go back and look at our numbers. So A, there are six that have zero siblings. So if we go back to our graph two, A represents that six. Um, what's the smallest percentage that we've got going on here? It's uh, looks like E, 3%. So let's go back to our graph simply by hitting exit. And that's going to be when we have four siblings. We only had one student. So, of course, that's going to have the smallest percentage. So this is a great um, visual for the students and to, to kind of understand where that percentage come from. You could have them do some calculations, um, make a connection between what these mean and how that um, is represented in a pie chart. Um, so let's hit exit and let's hit look at our last graph that we have and we it's asking us so for a histogram it's like where do you want to start? You know so we wanted to start at zero because we had zero siblings. How why do we want the bars to be? So we can play around with that. So let's let's change that to a one and then we're going to hit execute and so now we hit exit again. It's making the width of each bar one, um, and we can <clears throat> see the bar graph. You can actually hit exit and change the width and have students play around with it. What happens if we uh, do a two? Like, what, what's the difference in the graph if we make it two? And so we have to hit execute twice. Now it looks different. So this is a great um, exploration to have with students is how can you explore graphs and, and does what you see change the way the data looks depending on how wide you make the bars, those types of things. Don't always be, sometimes graphs can be deceiving because of the way they're drawn. So this is a great conversation and a great way for students to explore very quickly simply by changing some numbers. So let's hit back here to exit. When you are in either the histogram, which let's change that back to a one, execute twice, you'll notice that you have this option for one variable. So let's click that and see what that gives us. And this gives you all the statistical measures. And you'll you'll see this arrow over here. If I continue to go down, I'm going to get the quartiles, the medium, and the max, and the modes. So let's hit exit. So you get that when you're in the histogram, which we did for graph three. You also get that in the box plot. Now, with the box plot, we did the trace, and we could actually go to the statistical measures simply by choosing our left and right arrows. We could do that very quickly, but you could also hit the one variable and look at all the measures this way by arrowing down. So this is just a quick example of three of the graphs that you can make using the calculators. There are lots and lots of graphs, so it's a great easy tool, easy technology piece to work with your students with.